Ria, we are in 2030. Yes. What do you notice about the social investment sector? Be bold. Behold, okay, I was like, how do we follow that? <laughs> that was beautiful, I felt like I saw in your mind. Um, yeah, I think, so for me, I when I reflected on this, it was imagining opening a paper or whatever digital device there is by 2030, and what do I see in the news about social enterprise and social investment? And for, from like the outset, I'm seeing articles about um, social ventures led by um, previously underfunded founders now being funded at the rate that they should be. And there are, rather than one every couple of months, um, one article every couple of months about a black female-led founder raising a, a large social investment round, it's just sort of the standard, and I'll just be as, as excited as I am now, but just more frequently. <laughs> um, and crucially, that there'll be follow-on funding for them. It's not just that initial start of funding, there'll be working capital funds, there'll be th sort of the ecosystem of funding infrastructure for people to continue to grow and to respond to the demand of their communities, of the impact they want to make. Um, and then on the investor side, I'm seeing teams that are made up of people from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, that when there's a fund led by someone from a racially marginalized community, it's not a rarity. Or an investment committee made up of all, all women, uh, which is the case with the Growth Impact Fund. Uh, plug not fully <laughs> intended there. Um, and, and as part of that, actually, the, the Adebowale £50 million uh, fund that was recommended is, is actually happening now. It's black-led and black-focused. Um, and actually, let's go for more. It's 100 million. <laughs> and that's really supporting entrepreneurs across the UK. Um, and then one sort of like utopic idea for, for 2030 that actually did come to life is that um, the winding down of organizations is now really built into the way that they're funded. When people have um, a real shift and they see that there's there's no longer a demand or the impact could be focused elsewhere, the knowledge in their organizations is captured in a way that really takes into account um, the potential grief, but the empathy including in closing down a business, and then shared across all other social organizations that are working in that space to make sure that that can continue to be uh, developed and built upon. Um, and that's my 2030. Mm. Mm.